Hey everybody, Lawrence here with Dirty Basin Terrain, coming at you with another one. Standing stones, waystones, rune stones, whatever you want to call them, they are a classic piece of scattered terrain. And if done right, you can make them semi-modular. You can make them modular so you can set them up in different configurations on the board and they will be very useful. But they are very easy to make. They're not difficult. You can put all different types of symbols on it. You can make them as simple or as complicated as you want. I went for a more old, ancient, beat-up look with mine, but you can put whatever symbols you want on them if you want to put symbols on them. It doesn't matter. It's They're very versatile in how you want to make them. But this is what I did. Now, before we actually get to the video itself, I want to give a big shout-out to my patrons. Dungeon Matron, Coral, and Miyagi, your guys' help is always greatly appreciated, and I can't thank you enough. All right, guys, let's get to it. Here I'm using my Proxon to cut down a larger piece of off-cut foam in the more manageable sizes that I will work better for the standing stones I'm using. You absolutely do not need a hot wire for this. It just, I have it, and it's convenient. A blade will do exactly what I'm doing just fine. I want to cut these chunks down into slightly larger than what the individual stones will be, just so because I'll be carving off chunks to get it the look I want. Now I'm going to be doing various sizes, so but I'm only showing this one. But again, just cutting it down to more of a easily managed shape. Here I'm just carving away all the sharp edge, sharp hard edges from the foam because I'm going for an old beat up ancient rough look so clean crisp edges are not what I want for these but uh, right now all I'm doing is just basically carving off cutting off all the sharp edges and going for a really rough basic idea of how I want the end product to look Now that I've got my basic shapes made, I want to actually start carving out a few chunks like they've fallen off the stone or was done during the carving process originally. And maybe shave off a little bit more to get a more basic shape I want. But as you can see, I'm just cutting chunks out j just for aesthetic reasons, really. And until I get to a shape I'm happy with. Now that I've got that all done, I want to put some stone texture, so I'm just using the classic foil ball technique just to give a basic rough stone pattern. Not very hard or difficult, but basically it's a wadded boil of aluminum foil and rub it all over and roll it all over the place. Can't argue with the foil ball technique. It does its job and it winds up looking really good. Now here I want to actually start carving runes or different symbols into the foam itself. Now with this blue foam, I found that the Sharpie technique works best. I'll draw in the pattern and the ink actually eats a little bit into the foam. And then I'll trace over that pattern with my expensive number two pencil sculpting tool. Ju just to make the rune carving a little deeper into the foam. This seems to work best for this blue foam that I get here in the States. Your results may vary depending on what type of foam you use for this, but again, I'm just going with what actually works best for me. With these smaller stones, I'm just going to carve in two symbols, one on each side, and quick and done. Now, for this green foam that I often get, you can actually get this at Lowe's Home Improvement Store. Here in the States, I'm going with the blade technique. Basically, I'll use an, a sharp X-Acto, cut out the pattern, and then widen those lines with the pencil again. It's quick, it's easy, and like I said, it seems to work best for this type of foam. 
again, there are different methods to go with, but for the two types of foam that I'm using here, these two methods seem to work best. And as you can see here, various shapes, sizes, and different symbols on the stones. Being foam, you definitely want to give it a little extra protection. So I'm using some black Mod Podge, which is just Mod Podge and black acrylic paint mixed together. The Mod Podge will give it a little bit of extra durability and it'll protect it over time. Right now here I'm just going to get all the stones a uh, base coat of dark gray and as you can see I've actually stuck toothpicks in the bottom of all of them that's just so I have something to hold and I can stick that into the large chunk of foam right here and it makes a quick easy drying rack. Now that the base coat is dry I want to put a mid-tone on which is basically just a medium gray I'm using. I'm doing a quick overbrush over all the stones like 80-85% coverage, leaving all like the deep recesses alone. And it like the runes themselves. At least that's what I'm going to try and do. Don't always succeed, but I try. Now this method is where I am going to basically rip up a sponge and dab on various colors onto the stones. It's often referred to as leopard spotting. I heard Leaf over at Devs and Dice call it mustard and ketchup method. I like to call it clown puke. <laughs> because by the time you're done with all the different colors, it looks like a clown puked all over it. <laughs> But this is just a matter of putting various colors onto the stone because large chunk, you know, if you're doing brickwork or whatnot, you, you or you know, walk, walking past stones, yeah, you can get away with one color. But a large chunk of stone like this is going to have various colors throughout it. Go out and look at giant boulders and stuff, and you'll see more than just one color. This will give it a more natural look and honestly some a little more visual interest when it's on the table other than just a large chunk of gray. So I'm just using some semi natural some natural tones, some browns and orange, orangish brown and various colors. I said and just dipping it dipping the sponge into the paint and then just dabbing it all over the stuff real quick, real easy. And you, you don't even have to worry about washing out the brush in between. And as you can see here, it really does look like a clown puked on it. <laughs> now that I've got, now that the clown puke is all dry, <laughs> I'm going to do a quick um, dry brush of a light gray over top. Now this will mute all those different colors. And, but they'll still show through, so don't worry. And we're going to be doing some more steps to mute the color, mute the various colors even further. But this is just a real quick dry brush all over the entire stone to show all the edges and cracks and crevices. And like I said, this is a real quick dry brush. Not, I'm going for like maybe 20% coverage, maybe I don't, but not a not a not a base coat or an overbrush, but just a dry brush. Now that I've got the dry, dry brush is all dry and done, I'm going to give these stones a dark brown wash. I'll put a link in the description to how to make it, but this is a real quick and homemade wash I do. And this will, using a brown for me gives it a dirtier, like grungy appearance. And being that I'm going for an old ancient stones, 
that's the way I want to go. It's quick, it's easy, and just let it dry. Now that these stones are all, the wash is all dry, I'm going to grab the light, the light gray again, and I'm going to do a highlight dry brush. That basically means I'm going to dry brush it, but from the top down. I'm not going to be going up and down because I want it to look like, you know, if the sun is hitting it from above, it's a, it's a, it'll actually start highlighting everything. And again, this will mute the, the clown puke method down even a little, even more. You can still see them th see the various colors through, but it's just like not as garish anymore. And like I said, I like doing this because it does give the stone some visual interest. And I like it, so I'm going to continue to do it. <laughs> but again, this is just a highlight dry brush where basically I'm just brushing from the top down. Like where light is catching on the edges and places. Do, 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 do. Oh, 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 oh. Clumsy wizard. Yeah, this is a problem. These smaller ones tip over too damn easy. So I'm going to add some bolts into the bottom of them just to add some weight so they don't tip over with the slightest bump. It's pretty simple. I have like these oddball, these bolts from an oddball mix, and I'm just going to screw them right in. Now you want to screw them in deep enough that they actually countersink, that you have a flat bottom and they sit flat. A little more and see they don't tip over so quite so easily now I'm gonna do this to the smaller ones but to be honest the bigger ones with ones with bigger bait bottoms aren't gonna tip over quite so easily from a minor bump so it's completely up to you if you want to add some extra weight to the bottoms of these and there are different ways to add weights I just use this because I already had the holes from the toothpicks and it's really quick and easy. I've seen people add magnets, nuts, bolts, glass beads, all different types of things to the bottom. This is just how I did it. Now, the runes, after all the washes and dry brushes, they're not popping quite as much as I want. So I'm just going to give use a shade, a little citadel shade here of null oil, and just basically paint in all the rune lines quick J just to make them pop a little bit more and so they're more visible on the tabletop now I'm gonna paint each side and then just let it sit up so the noil will have time to settle in you can you, this is a step you can skip if you want to but like I said I just want to make them pop a little bit more and more visibly seen on the table and it actually, if you want to, this is, you could pick, you could use a different color. Like if you want one of them to be like they were carved in blood or something, use a red, or I've even seen people do glowing runes. But again, this is, I'm going for an old ancient beat up look. So I'm just going with a quick black. Now, these large areas that I cut out, they're a little bit too light for what I want, so I'm going to use this dark brown pigment powder that I made, and I'm just going to brush it in real quick. And any other place that I think would look dirty over time, but I said, I just want to get this done real quick and easy. And after I'm done brushing on, I'm going to give it a spritz with some isopropyl alcohol just to set it in so it doesn't easily rub off. 
Now, I like adding moss to stuff, especially if it's supposed to be old and worn like the stones I'm doing here. So, I'm grabbing my moss paste mixture and I'm placing it, especially in those large chunks that were cut out or anywhere else that I think might need it. And then once I'm done placing it, I'm going to sprinkle some fo yellow fine turf over top just to give it a little extra highlight and more visual interest. It's a simple little step and it really does make the moss paste pop a little lot more. And as you can see here, with some miniatures amongst them, there are various shapes and sizes, and I'm actually really happy with how they turned out. Perfect for the look I was going for, old and beat up. I'm really happy with how they look. Again, various sizes, and you can make them as big or as small as you want. There's nothing that says they have to be giants or tiny, teeny, or anything like that. Make them to what fits your need or desire. Hey everybody, if you made it this far, it means you made it to the end, and as always, I greatly appreciate it and thank you very much. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more, click subscribe. Down in the description, there's links to the Discord patron. If you want to, either one, we greatly appreciate If you guys decide to build your own standing stones, or if you have, come to the Discord and post pictures. I'd love to see what you guys have done. Always willing to take inspiration from other people, and I'd love to see what you do. But as always, guys, remember, when making your train, there's only one person you got to worry about, and that's you, because it's your train.